I just built this $500 gaming PC with amazing performance and great aesthetics, all for under $500. This might be the best $500 price performance gaming PC that you can probably buy right now. This video is split into four parts. First is I show you where and how to buy all of these parts for this PC. Second, I show you step-by-step -step how to build the entire computer. Third, I show you the performance or the benchmarks for the gaming of this computer. And lastly, I discuss should you buy this computer, every last thing you may want to know. Pretty much everything you need to know about this computer at a $500 budget is in this entire video. So right now on AliExpress, there is an end of season sale and this is something that happens kind of frequent actually. So first things first, our CPU is the Ryzen 5 5600. I bought the CPU many times and it's perfect for PC budgets from 400 to like $800. And this listing right here, it's $76 and with coupon codes, you could probably get it down to like 70. So honestly, a great starting pick. And to cool our CPU, we have this pretty nice Thermite Assassin Digital cooler. For an extra $6, the digital display I think is pretty worth it. It definitely just adds to the overall aesthetic vibe of this build and I wanted to try it out and for you guys as well. Next up is the RAM. We have the Kleesear DDR4 kit. We have a 32 gigabyte kit. This is only $38, which is insane. And after a coupon code, you get it down to 35 even. This is one of the best deals you can find at AliExpress pretty regularly considering 60 gigabytes normally cost the same amount as this 32 gigabyte kit will cost you. And right here is the ASRock B550M Pro SE. Now I did get this on an open box deal. I bought five of them a long time ago and it turned out to be about $57 per motherboard, which is just insane. But pretty much any B450, A520, B550 or X570 will do. I would just recommend finding the minimum one for you. Next up is this one terabyte NVMe from Clev. Now this is a pretty popular option on Amazon. It's one of the cheapest options you could find for one terabyte and it's gen 4 so if you're getting a better motherboard you can utilize that gen 4 support and have up to 5,000 megabytes per second now next up is the graphics card we went for the 5700 XT from AMD now this is one of the best price performance graphics cards you can find and especially at our target $500 budget this is honestly perfect and I'll show you we have an upgrade path time and time again rise of 5600 5700 XT Great combination. And to power our entire build, we have one of the best and cheapest 650 watt power supplies, the Segotep 650 watt 80 plus gold. This isn't modular, but honestly at this price point, don't expect that. It's amazing. It's tier C on the tier list. Top of the YouTubers like Toasty Bros actually use this in like all of their builds that they sell. I've used this many times and I recommend it. It's perfect. It's plenty for this build. That is why we're gonna have an upgrade path with a GPU that can support a 650 watt power supply. And over on Newegg, we can fit everything in the Montec XR. This is a beautiful case, 6390 right now. It comes with three fans, very aesthetic, everything that you really want in a case. And yeah, that marks the end of all the specs for this build, but most importantly, we actually have to build it. Let's get into it. First up, we have this motherboard. Now, after getting the motherboard out, first we have the Ryzen 5 5600. Voila. Now, just snap that back. Just line that CPU up and push this lever and make sure it latches on. I want to do next is the RAM. RAM is always pretty simple to install. Now, take the second and fourth slot. And then with this side facing, just line it up. Pretty simple. Line it up. Get that click. Now for the SSD, this one comes with an included heat sink. What I like to do is install the SSD first, which is just a simple line that up, push it in a little bit. Now take that screw and now just screw that in. Now we're gonna take our heat sink and make sure to peel the plastic off. Just line it up nicely with the SSD. Now we're almost done with preparing the motherboard. For the CPU cooler, we're gonna need to unscrew these brackets. Here we have the Thermalright Assassin 120 millimeter digital RGB. Now I haven't used this yet, so this is gonna be interesting. Now look at that. This thing already comes a little bit cable managed here. Now make sure you get these red standoffs for AMD. Now I'm placing both screws before and placing the bracket in like this and I like to screw it in a little bit right away. Same on the other side. 
Now we can actually apply some thermal paste, which is included with the CPU cooler. Now doesn't that look beautiful? Now the plastic seal right here already came off in the packaging, but make sure you remove that. Now just line up the screws and then start screwing down a little bit on both sides at the same time to ensure equal pressure and do the same with the screwdriver. Now we're gonna take our fan and these little clip things and put them in the holes corresponding on both sides. Then just push them back, a little bit of force, until they click on to the heat sink. And I do it equal on both sides. And yeah, that's all you need to do for now. This right here is a beautiful Sama SV02. Um, it's great, it's only like $60, and you're about to see why I picked this. the back panel also snaps off, which is super convenient. Now what you're gonna wanna do is grab these screws right here and uh, now we can install the motherboard. First, we're gonna have to adjust some of these standoffs on the bottom here. So I'm just gonna keep on removing them. Now I'm gonna move them to the new locations. Yep, and these standoffs basically just correspond with the motherboard holes, so then we can go screw it all in. Now we can go ahead and slide our motherboard in. Yeah, it should just easily kind of fall into place. And yeah, now we just use these screws to make sure it's all tight. All the screws done. Time to move on to the power supply. Now, since we're using cable extensions, I like to plug these in first before anything. So far this PC is looking pretty good. Now it's time to plug in all these motherboard connectors. We have no USB-C, so can't use that one. And the USB 3.0 goes right next to the power for the motherboard. The HD audio goes on the very bottom right. And the F panel goes on the left. USB 3.0, F panel, HD audio. And now we have this mess. Now we're gonna unbox our power supply. And here it is. Now, the fan facing down, slide it in through here. Now we can screw in our power supply screw. Three big booms. Now we have a big mess, but it's okay. First, we're gonna take our CPU, plug it in. Like that. Then we can take our big old power cord and plug it in easily. We're gonna make sure plug in the SATA into this actual hub, otherwise the fans will not work. And with these, these are optional. They can be plugged into the motherboard so you can control them with the software, which I'm just gonna end up doing. Lastly, PCIe, just make sure I route this. So when we plug in a graphics card, I'm not gonna have to go back here and grab this cable. Run it up like so. Now we can just take the cables we're not using, kind of shove them away for now. All right, so basically just plug in the RGB from the CPU into here. And then I also have the fan. And now I'm just going to move it into the fan hub to make everything easier because we actually plugged in the hub into the motherboard, which means we don't actually have to plug in any of these white ones into it. That makes sense. Now with the rest of the cables, I'm going to plug in the PWN and the RGB. And one I didn't mention I did was this USB, which I routed from the CPU cooler all the way to the back and into the USB to make it look nice and clean. All right, now the real last thing to do is install the graphics card. You gotta remove these brackets first. All right, so here is the 5700 XT. Amazing performance, but here we go. Gotta make sure this is removed. And slot that in. Nope, just gonna screw this back in. And now, plug in the cable extensions. Now we just plug that nice in and 
Looking pretty good. It is time to see if this works. Boom, posting lighter set TPM, always a thing I have to do. All right, perfect. So the first game we're testing out is Marvel Rivals. This is done in 1440p balance quality and overall medium settings, which is plenty good. Honestly, I think it looks great. And as we can see, it gets an average around 90 FPS. Now I turned on the overall settings to low, which gives us about 10 more FPS. Now on 1080p, you can see numbers such as 180 FPS, but it mainly goes around 120. Overall, I just recommend playing on low settings as this game is actually kind of hard to run. Now moving on to the only game I'm good at, we have Fortnite at 1440p performance mode. Now as we can see, it's always above 200 FPS, which is just insane, considering it goes upwards to 400 FPS, and even at 1080p, it can be even higher. Overall, this PC runs Fortnite very well. Now... Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Now I haven't played this game in a long time so I'm pretty rusty but at 1440p balance settings so pretty much medium we're getting around 85 FPS in Nuketown. Not too bad at 1440p. Just ignore all my deaths but here we have 1080p and the FPS improves kind of a lot at around 115 to 120. Overall I wouldn't recommend high quality but it still performs pretty good around low to medium settings. In Cyberpunk 1440p high with AMD FSR we got around 72 2 FPS and with frame gen we got 81 FPS. So these are just the settings that I would use. Now the real test we have Among Us 1440p max graphics. I'll just let my commentary speak for itself. I think we got it. I think we got the imposter. I think we got the imposter. See ya. Ow. So yeah, the PC sold, so that's why I don't have it here anymore. Check out my YouTube short for that. But overall, a great build. Highly recommend at the $500 budget. Obviously, the more expensive you go, the better graphics card you should get. And I wouldn't cheap out on the SSD storage. But yes, you do gotta buy some AliExpress parts, but it is 100% worth it. There's a 99% chance you will not get scammed because you have to buy from legit sellers. Prices change all the time, so whatever it is right now might be different from what it was for me. Could be cheaper, but for sure use AliExpress for your your CPU and RAM probably. Subscribe.